Hey everyone, Zach here. Today I'm going to talk about using HashiCorp Vault with Ansible to provide per host credentials. So if you've used Ansible Automation Platform or even AWX in the past with job templates, you'll know that there's you only have the ability to attach one credential of a particular type to a job template. So what that means is uh, the most commonly used credential, a machine credential, which is used to authenticate to a target host, you can't have more than one machine credential attached to a job template. So if you have a fleet of you know 100 hosts that you're running against, you need to have, let's say, a service account that has access to those hosts, which you can then attach the service account's credential to the job template so that it can then run against all 100. Sometimes we run into security pushback in that scenario where unique passwords for you know fleets of hosts or groups of hosts that large is required and you kind of get into a conundrum of okay well how do i run my playbook against all 100 of the hosts where you know i need 100 unique credentials or maybe i need 10 different credentials and this post is here to walk you through a way that you can achieve that and still run your playbooks through aap now i do think in the future there's probably going to be a feature of maybe ansible inventory where this becomes a possibility to have more host specific credentials but for now this this workaround does work it works at scale uh, we do have very large customers using this process so here I'm just gonna walk you through it and hopefully uh, you're able to implement it in your environment as well so the first thing I want to talk through is the playbook mechanics because they're very important for understanding one why we have to do this but also how we're able to achieve it so the first thing I want to note on is that Ansible runs a VN execution strategy the default execution strategy we call linear, meaning that Ansible runs on each task on each host in the play before starting the next task. So for example, if you have 10 hosts that you're running against and you have five forks, Ansible is gonna run the first task on five hosts, it'll run the first task on the other five hosts before moving on to the second task, and it'll continue on throughout the playbook. There are other execution strategies, which I'm not gonna dive into in this post, but just know that the default is linear and that's how it operates. By default, when you run a playbook, if you don't turn gather facts off, it's going to be the first task in the playbook. And the way gather facts works is it effectively executes the ansible.built-in.setup module, which will connect to the host. That becomes a problem for us in this particular scenario because if we're doing per host credentials, we need to set up some special variables and we won't have them set up prior to gather facts trying to run. So what we're gonna do is in this scenario, always turn gather facts to false. Uh, and that doesn't prevent us from doing the gather facts functionality. Uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate how you can do that later on in the playbook uh, in this post as well. The other thing to note is that basically anytime in this process where you're setting up your per host credentials, if you run a task that would attempt to connect to the host itself, you're gonna want to delegate to localhost, right? We don't want any task trying to connect to the target boxes until we've set up the credentials. Otherwise our playbook will fail uh, and we'll have to figure out a different workaround. So what does the process look like at a very high level? I've got this diagram in the post where basically you have an Ansible playbook and the first step is that you're going to look up from Vault or some other secrets manager, in this particular demo, it's gonna be HashiCorp Vault, and you're gonna look up a credential from Vault based off of the name of the host. Uh, and it may be based off of a different host bar. My example, I'm gonna use the inventory host name. So we're gonna go out to Vault, grab the credential, we're gonna set some special variables, and then all the subsequent tasks, so here represented as two you know, through in, we're gonna be able to then connect to the host with our unique Ansible password or our Ansible SSH private key file. In this example, I'm gonna focus on SSH private keys so I have some other high level noted uh, examples in the post, but I'm gonna actually dive into the playbook during this video so you can get to see it um, in full detail. So this is the playbook that would be linked from the source for my post. And you'll see here that just, we've got a regular playbook. Um, our first play here just, it's gonna be called HashiVault per host password demo. And I variableize the hosts. So this just allows me to change what I'm running against. I'll show you guys in my job template how I set that value. But for now, just imagine it being a couple of hosts, Vault Demo 1 and Vault Demo 2 that I'm gonna run against. Of course, I set gather facts to false, so that's gonna be very important here. And then I've got some variables that I allow to be overridden via a survey, which I'll show in the job template. I've got my secret container, so 
that is in Hashi Vault, we have different secrets engine we can use, which ultimately lead to a path which you are going to reference to pull the secret. The default one that's created, if you watch my install vault tutorial, is called Cubbyhole. And then in the Cubbyhole secret engine, I created a folder called Ansible. So that's where my secrets live for this particular demo, but that's variableized again, so I could override it if I had placed them somewhere else. The second one is Vault No Log. I use this for really debugging purposes. Anytime you're doing something with passwords or secrets, you definitely want to make sure you have no log set to true because you don't want them written out in your logs. However, I do provide a variable where I can turn it off for debugging um, in case I'm having some failures and trying to figure out what's going wrong. So now we'll get into the pre-task section and these could run in the task section as well. I like to put them in pre-task just to designate the difference. Um, and make it very clear that these aren't necessarily part of the play operation itself. These are pre-tasks which I'm using to set up my credentials. So I've got two methods here supported. I'm gonna skip password for now. Just know that you can do it with passwords. And I'm gonna show the SSH key example, which is a little bit more complicated. So the password one is actually easier. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and create a temp file. And you'll notice here, I'm delegating to localhost. This is very important because if I didn't, it would actually try to create a temp file on the target host, which I don't have connection variables for yet. So definitely want to make sure we delegate to localhost there. And temp file just creates a file, and that's where we're going to put the contents of the private key. So we'll register that out just so we have access to the path. And then we scroll down here. The next step is where we're going to use the copy module, which may seem a little counterintuitive, but we're going to first get the content that we're going to copy into the temp file. This is where really the magic's happening. We're using the community.hashivault HashiVault lookup plugin, and we're giving it a path to our secret. So you'll notice I've got my secret container, which is gonna be that cubbyhole slash Ansible. And then I've got my inventory host name, and it's very important that you have a naming convention for your secrets in your vault, uh, or your secrets manager, because you wanna be able to reference the path to the secret based off of the host that this particular task is running against. Um, even though we're delegating it to local host, we still want to be able to pull the appropriate secret for that particular host. I use inventory host name. That's my suggestion. I think it's the most clear. However, you could use any host var um, that's available to you to build out the path to that secret. I then finish it off with that colon SSH, which in vault represents the key um, that is a part of that secret. And then of course I have my destination where I'm placing it in that r.temp.path, which is the location of the temp file. The last step is where we actually set those special variables. So in Ansible, you have your Ansible underscore user. As you can see, here, I've got EC2 user, so I'm running on EC2 instances. Then I've got this SSH private key file variable where I'm pointing it at the temp file path. That's what makes SSH key a little bit more complicated, just the fact that you have to set up a temp file, plop the, the contents of the secret into the temp file, and then point to the temp file. With a password, you basically just look up the password and set it to the Ansible underscore password variable. But once these pieces are done, I can then hop into my task section. And the example task here uh, I use for two reasons. One, I want to show that you can indeed still gather facts. You just have to turn gather facts false off at the beginning. And then you can start your play with Ansible.builtin.setup, which achieves the exact same functionality. The second reason I do this is just to prove out that it works, right? So this ansible.builtin.setup will connect to the box itself. So if I didn't properly set my connection variables, if my secrets were malformed in Vault, this step would fail. So now just to show you guys what it looks like in Vault, uh, this is my Vault instance that I spun up uh, with my playbook that I showed in my install Vault video. It gives me that cubbyhole secrets engine. I created that Ansible folder and I've got Vault Demo 1 and Vault Demo 2 which are the names of my EC2 instances. If I click on Vault Demo 1, you'll see I've got my SSH key here, which is that path I built out in the playbook itself, and then it's got a value. So now let's hop over into Ansible and take a look at the job template itself. So the job template pointing at that playbook I just showed you, attached to an inventory, which is going to have my Vault Demo 1 and my Vault Demo 2 VM, You'll notice here in the variables, I've got that underscore host set to Linux. So that is gonna be a group, right? That host tag in Ansible is pretty powerful. So it can point at a particular host, a list of hosts, a group, a list of groups, or a combination of all of the above. So in this particular example, I'm just gonna point it at a group. And I'll show you guys that group in my inventory in just a moment. The other thing I have here on this play, 
this job template is a survey. So this is where I allow the user to, to variableize and manipulate the job run that they're using. So if I, for instance, in my secrets container, if I create a different folder, I could override that default cubbyhole Ansible and point it at a different folder. I could swap my authentication method from SSH key to password, and then I can turn off secure logging if I'm debugging. Of course, wouldn't want to do that in a, any other scenario. The other thing I want to call out here is my credentials. So typically when you have a job template, you're probably used to attaching a machine credential. In this case, the only credential we have is a HashiCorp vault lookup credential. The reason why we have that is you'll notice in my playbook, I didn't have any secret information to actually make the lookup to HashiVault. That secret is coming from my custom HashiCorp vault credential that I created, which is linked in the references of the Autodotes post but that is what injects the values to actually allow me to access the secret that I'm pointing to. Um, so there's no, no secret voodoo going on there. I'm actually injecting the environment variables, which the plugin is looking for, and then uses to connect to the vault instance. So pretty cool, no machine credential, even though I'm connecting to multiple hosts. Um, and again, like I said, you could do this with 100 hosts. In my example, I'm just gonna be running it against two. So let me cancel out of that. I wanna hop over to the inventory and show you guys just what it looks like. So here I've got my Vault Demo 1 and my Vault Demo 2, and you'll notice they're both in the Linux group, which again is what I'm setting as my host tag, which is what the playbook will run against. So I come back over here, I'll go ahead and give it a launch. I don't need to change any of these defaults. Um, I'm gonna, I've got my secrets here. I wanna use this stage key and then my secure logging, secure logging all set to true for now because I'm not debugging. You'll notice that it injects my secrets uh, from the survey here as well as variables. And then if I go ahead and click launch, we'll let it run. And this should be pretty quick because there's not a lot of automation happening here. We're really just gathering facts in the end. Uh, but the idea is to show, and we got a successful output, that I can take two different VMs with two different credentials, right? Two different private keys that I needed to connect to those hosts. And without a machine credential on the job template, I'm able to successfully connect to both of them. And at the very end, I'm actually able to gather facts, which means I connected to the box and I pulled a bunch of information from the box itself. What that means is I could have any number of tasks after that that would work just as well like a normal playbook. So I hope you enjoyed this post. Um, and if you find yourself in that situation where you need unique passwords per host, uh, I hope you, you know, give this a shot. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a note uh, in the video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for listening.